We can't deny our love-hate relationship with social media. It brings us joy, it moves us, and let's be honest, it can stress us the hell out. We just can't miss the next funny meme or the next new versus battle, TikTok dances, and anything else that comes along with it. On this episode of Listen to Black Women, we're discussing how to navigate our addiction to social media and the importance of stepping away and putting that phone down at least once in a while. I'm Chris Smith, and these are my lovely co-hosts, Jesse Wu, Tiffany Nicole Irvin, and Taryn Finley. Get ready to put your IGs on mute, pull up a chair, and get comfy, because Listen to Black Women starts now. Black women have been at the center of culture since the beginning of time. We start trends, we do dance crazes, and serve all the looks. But with the new trending video popping up every minute, we just can't keep up with all of it. Which leads me to our question of the day. Is your online FOMO slowly killing you? According to Eventbrite, FOMO is experienced by 69% of millennials, while Mashable reports that 56% of social media users are experiencing FOMO as we speak. Are we keeping it real about our social media addictions and what it's doing to us mentally? Let's have some real talk, ladies. I constantly compare myself to people and things on social media. And like my rational brain is telling me, girl, that's fake. Why are you doing this? But I can't help it. It's literally a sickness. Yeah. Yeah. And when you see it constantly, when you're scrolling, whether you're doom scrolling or like just mindlessly looking on through your IG feed, Twitter or whatever, like that gets into you, you know, even if you're not necessarily trying to absorb all of that subconsciously, you know, it really does something where you do start to compare. You do start to experience these, you know, thoughts of uh, anxiety, depression, things like that. Yeah. Especially like, you know, the trend when people have like keys and they either have a brand new warehouse right. or a brand new yes, apartment. Yes. And then you're in your Absolutely. house looking like, this is raggedy, <laughs> you know? I, I think that um, most people would like to say that they don't compare, but in reality, like I just feel like it's kind of designed for us to stay Absolutely. in that rabbit, you know, mm-hmm. that hamster wheel. Yeah. yeah. What you think, I, I feel like I can relate to that, but then also with me, like I have a bigger following. Mm-hmm. So sometimes when you are like a public figure, people have so many opinions about you. Mm. So one thing I do, like if I don't follow you, you can't tag me in anything mm. because people will tag you in all types of foolishness. People will, you know, and when you keep seeing certain things, like like you said, it does like you internalize it. Yeah. it you internalize yeah. it. You know, like just like just the other day, like even. On my way here today, I had a comment. Somebody was like, "Man, you're so ugly." What? You know, and like Jeez. it was under a picture. It was under a video where I do like my skincare routine, and I remember, like five years ago when I first started building my following, and like if I would go online with no makeup on and stuff, and people would call me ugly, and I was like, "Dang, I didn't know I was mm. ugly until like Instagram told me." So then it's like you will find yourself trying to unugly yourself. Mm. So mm. then you're seeing all these other images of pretty girls. Well, what do I do to be that? So what, do I go get lip injections? Do I go get lipo? Do I go get mm. a, you know, a BBL? Like, what do I do to become one of those girls? And so like, yeah, it's that's my relationship with it. So one thing I do, like I said, you cannot tag me. You cannot like tag me in anything if I don't follow you. And another thing I try to do, sometimes I fail, but I try not to look at uh, social media until afternoon, Mm -hmm. every day. So like in the morning, like whatever my routine is, read my Bible or, you know, journal or whatever business I have to handle, maybe go to the gym. But I try not to look at social media until afternoon. Yeah, like Jesse, I literally just adopted that this year and it's done wonders for my mental health. Like I wake up before I even like check in with anybody else's opinions, I check in with myself because I found that like I really was looking to social media for validation without even like knowing that I was doing that and it's hard to like kind of have that healthy relationship when like all of our jobs are tied to social media so like when you aren't you know on you do feel like you're missing out you do feel like you know there are missed opportunities missed news missed you know all of these things like you really have to check that yeah 
I think I figured something out. All right, bear with me. Like, okay, I think okay. I figured something out. Let me all right. Take notes. So I think that, you got your notebook. <laughs> right. There's a difference between a community and an audience, mm -hmm. right? And let's just say you have 50,000 followers. That's 50,000 people in your audience, but not everyone in your audience is in your community. So I think the sooner you figure out who your niche is, right? Like if you're talking to everyone, you're really talking to no one. And I think yeah. what messes people up is we show up online and we try to say, you know, what can I post that everybody will like? Right. But it's yeah. not about what everybody will like. Right. Who are you talking to? Because when you're trying to appeal to everyone, you're basically creating your own prison. But when you're talking to your people, they're gonna talk back. So I do yeah. feel like there's a difference between like building an audience and attracting mm. your people. And I found for myself, the more real I am, the more I attract my people, the more I even say polarizing stuff that's like really how I feel, it gets the people away who aren't with it and it really calls to the people who are with it. And now when I get online, it's just, it's more of a freedom feeling versus like a nervous feeling. Cause mm. it's true, like Jesse said, the more followers you do get, it is kind of, like, it's different when you have 10 followers, you exactly. say whatever. Exactly. Right. But if you're getting online, you have a million followers. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's like a little bit of stage fright. So I think once people start using social media to really like in an intentional way mm -hmm. versus like for the validation, it mm -hmm. does feel better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I've never, I've never shown up in social media trying to appeal to anybody. That's yeah. one thing about me. It's like, I'm myself. So if you don't like it, you don't like it. I'm following yeah. this free girl. Yeah, literally. it's like, yeah. that's, that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> and like, okay. who you see on social media is who you get in person. Yeah. I think the only difference is when you see me in person, I think some, sometimes people will see my social media and they think when they meet me, mm. I'm gonna be like, like Give going off the up. walls yeah. and doing stand up. Like, you've worked with me for years. Like, yeah. I'm not like that. Like, oh, I like... come to work, I just do my job. And then, like, if we do have conversation, yeah, like, I will let loose like that. But yeah, I think just social media, it's kind of like everybody just turns into something that they're not. Mm -hmm. And then when you meet them in real life, that's not even that person. Yeah. But sometimes it's like, okay, you know, you may see me in Whole Foods and you may be like, oh, she has an attitude, you know, but like but my like dog died. Right. Not gonna lie. Literally. Like, I just went through real life stuff and I'm just trying to get my just eggs. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> no, my that's real. And now you're tweeting about how old just, just saw Christmas and she's not who she yeah. says she is. Yeah. Like, yeah. we're human. Yeah. No, for real. Like, that's why, like, whenever that hate, like, comes knocking on my door, I literally remind my followers, like, y'all don't know me. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all do not know me. Like, let, like, let's be real. Like, this, again, like, we are building community. We are, you know, you know, promoting our work and having these meaningful conversations. But there has to be a separation, a healthy separation of who you are as, like, yeah. a person versus who you are online. Yeah. Boundaries. How do you find that balance, though? Because I'll be honest, when it comes to, like you said before, you're constantly trying to find that balance between, all right, I have to be on social media right now because I have to get this money. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, it's like, I just sat on Instagram and scrolled for three hours yeah. straight when yeah. I could have been being productive. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I, I keep it real, like I'll, I'll struggle with that balance. You gotta wake up in the morning time and the first thing you're doing is looking at your phone. I have not adopted that elevated lifestyle where you wake up in the morning and you don't look at your phone. That's the first thing I do. And I know that's not healthy, but how do you find the balance? I think having intention, like what is your intention for the day? You know, like you have to be focused. So for instance, like I said, I try not to look at my phone until noon. Then I think creating a to-do list, like mm -hmm. today, what do I want to do? I recently started writing scripts. Like today I want to finish my script. I want to go to the gym today. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to cook. I'm going to read. Like you make yourself a to-do list because like you said, yeah, like next thing you know, you get on that phone and you're there for like three hours. Right. Literally. Like out of nowhere. And that's time wasted that you could have been doing something, doing something else. And then you know what else too? What do you really see on social media? Like when you're scrolling, like what do you see? What you, you don't see nothing. So like, that's the really challenge. Like, no, yeah. but that's the challenge in me. I can find myself scrolling because I follow a lot of like art pages mm -hmm. and like I'm constantly on social media because yeah, I'm there for the foolishness and right. the celeb news, but I'm also constantly looking for inspiration. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like for me, it's literally like either unfollow all the trash and only focus on this yeah. or you just gonna have to figure out a way to mentally fil filter it. Yeah. There is no in between. Yeah, for you. you have to. Yeah, Clean, definitely cleaning up 
that timeline. Time yes. But now Instagram yes. is doing yes. that new thing, and now people suggesting that you don't follow stuff that you don't follow. But right. you can change that in the settings, just so you guys know. Yeah. Okay. I did not know that. You can it. Okay. I hate that. I actually have a ghost account that I use because I feel like. Instagram just now they only show you what they want you to see even right. with your followers like yeah. you could be following a thousand people and you're only seeing the same 10 people every but day also Twitter TikTok you know the other social media TikTok is worse platform. than Instagram so, no me. TikTok the commenters on TikTok the comments they on are TikTok wild. they are yeah. I got on TikTok, TikTok and said a, a joke, zoo. and when I went back to my comments, it was in Shambells. Yeah. Okay? Yo, <laughs> TikTok yeah. is a zoo, bro. It, it really is. is. But I have to be honest, mm -hmm. like, I have met some of the most important people in my life off social no, media. That's exactly, which is why it's so, so many hard. valuable it's connections. Just, yeah. So it's thinking about something like what you just said, that's a perfect example of why you start to get that sense of FOMO because it's right. like, well, what if everybody else is out there meeting connections and, and doing things and I'm taking a break from social media so I could be missing out on potential opportunities. Yeah. And I'll be honest, like sometimes I do feel like that. You but know you know I'm, what? The principles in life are the same as the principles on social media. What's true. for you will never pass you, even mm, online. That's a fact. And I think mm. what happens is like everyone's living this life and then they put the phone on and then they're like, ah, like something changed. Yeah. Mm. Nothing changed when yes. you get on social media, just like when you post something, even though your comments could be a shambles, when you put that phone down, life is the it's same. Literally. Your bank account is the same. Your credit, you know, score is the same. The people who love we you take are it too serious. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a question for y'all. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and keep it honest. Have y'all ever posted a picture and then like it didn't get as many likes as you wanted or it didn't get as much traction and it's like, damn, like there's something wrong with me. Like, <laughs> what's going on? Why it's not? Cause like, and you feel that in your gut and it's like, why do I feel so deeply about why people are not liking this photo or interacting with it? This is just Instagram, but I know it's happened to me. Yeah. Listen, my homegirl, she did a viral like nail video when she's yeah. like, I'm pointing at you in the club. Oh, did I love that? that one. And she got like over a million and something views on Instagram. Oh, she wow. posted the same thing on TikTok, 200 views. Wow. Does it make it less dope? Mm, no. It, that's the thing. And I think once we realize that, like, how does it have a million views? Because sometimes the algorithm is just doing what the algorithm does. With social media, if the intention isn't there, then mm. God knows how you're going to feel. Every day, your feelings are going to be determined by who's saying what to who and why. And yeah. I can't live like that. Yeah, that part. That's a fact. Okay, so pretty much, I think it just comes down to being honest with ourselves, you know, setting intentions for what we want and not really trying to satisfy the whole audience, getting clear on who our community is. And it should be a stress-free experience. If social media is causing you to lose sleep, if it's causing you anxiety, you could always just shut the phone off. Mm -hmm. That's fact. Period. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's switch gears, and it's time to play a little game called Name That Classic, mm -hmm. Protect Your Peace Edition. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna read you some lyrics, and if you know the artist and the song, you're gonna grab your paddle and raise it up. Okay. Y'all okay. yeah, ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's get let's it, go. girls. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I'm probably not gonna know nothing, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try my best. Don't Believe in yourself. I'm gonna try. All right, I'm gonna start with the first one. And I'm gonna do a deaf poetry jam style. Okay. okay. Cool. I ain't gonna sing it, that's cheating. Right. Okay. All right. Woke up this morning with a smile ah! on my face. What, did what is know? it, Jesse? Jill Scott. Greets. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <No! laughs> it's the way. Well, I mean, is it Jill it's Scott? Still, but she said Grits. It's still Grits. No, okay, we'll, we'll give it to you. I we'll still got it, because baby, I wasn't even Because I don't know the name of no song, so like, honestly, I'm impressed. Right. So <laughs> I'm going to do a little addendum to the rules, so okay. you can know the artist or the song. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. 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 I like that. Baby, I wasn't that. getting either one of them, so. Everybody okay. know that line, Grits. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. So, lyric two. Mm -hmm. How can I love somebody else? If I can't love myself enough to know when it's time, time to let go. Ooh. Oh my God, that sounds so familiar. Come on. I need to hear the tune. Right. I need the tune. Girl, Come on. sing right. it a little bit. Right. Um, no, no, no. All right, let me do it one more time. Okay. It's, a, it's a female artist. Right? How can I love some? Uh, uh, go ahead, Jesse. Lauren Hill. <laughs> no. Mary J. Blige. Oh, oh wow. wow. How can oh, I see? the game, oh, right? Oh, dang. I mean, I was okay. close. You was close, love. you was close. Okay. All right, all right, come on, y'all. <laughs> okay, wait, I think I'm gonna know this one. Okay. All right. I do my hair toss, check my nails, 
Baby, okay, Taryn was uh, Yes, Lizzo. Come Lizzo. On now. Mm -hmm. yes. Good as hell. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lizzo. I mean, I feel good that I at least knew one. I get, I wasn't fast enough, but I knew it. <laughs> you gotta be quicker than that. Okay. Lizzo and Lizzo. Put that wrist. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, we got okay. two more. Okay. okay. All right. Trash. So, safe to take a step out. Mm. Get some air now. Let your edge out. Too soon, I spoke. You be heavy in my mind. Can't get you the heck out. I need rest now. Is that Ari Lennox? No, it is not. Oh, it is SZA, good days. Are you? Oh, oh duh. You know you can't understand what she's saying. Ooh, okay. no, 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 SZA speaks in cursive. Like, you know. Come on now. I mean. But, we, but you know what? We, we should have known. Known. Known, yeah. known that. We should have known that. Yeah, we should have. We should have known that. Mm -hmm. I don't like this game. I need to. <laughs> no, I think, I think that you're going to get this last one. Okay. I think y'all yeah, are going to get this last okay. one. Okay. All right, let's let her before you start having No, 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 but ah! I, I still not know it, so don't even do that. All right, ready? Sometimes I shave my legs and sometimes I don't. Ooh. Okay, it's all right. I knew that one, so I feel good about myself, but you can answer because you was first. Andy Irie. Yes, <laughs> video. Because <laughs> I damn sure don't be shaving my legs. Okay. Good job. Okay, that's all we got. Good job. Okay, okay right. that was fun. I feel good that I at least knew two. I right. didn't get it, but I knew that's I'm close. close. That's exactly. close. That's close. Okay. That's close. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Listen to Black Women. I got the message loud and clear. Stop worrying about what everyone else is doing and worry about yourself, okay? Ladies, that is a wrap on season two of Listen to Black Women. We hope you enjoyed watching the show just as much as we enjoyed hosting. Thank you for participating and telling us exactly how you felt. It's always a good time reading your comments. Please let us know which topics you think we should cover for the next season. Drop us a comment below or tweet us at Madame Noir. We are your hosts, Jesse Wu, Taryn Finley, and Tiffany Nicole Irvin. And of course, your girl, Christmas. Until next time, bye.